Hello there, and welcome. Hey, have you seen my dog Sparky? He was here just a minute ago, and now he's gone. And for his birthday last week, I got him a dog whistle, but I can't seem to find that either. I blew on it a lot during his birthday party last week, but he didn't seem to understand what it was. And then he just curled up on his pillow and took a nap. I tried to tell him some interesting facts about the whistle and his own doggy hearing, but he just yawned and looked bored. Sometimes he isn't interested in a long talk, but since you're here, I'll tell you. First of all, a dog's ears are different from a human's ears, but I'm sure you knew that already just by looking at them. Doggy ears clearly come in all different categories. Big, small, furry, sleek, floppy, pointy, you get the picture. And human ears? Well, they all look sort of the same and a lot less hairy. So obviously, Sparky's ears are very different from mine in looks, but that's not the whole story. Dogs definitely have much, much better hearing than humans. Sparky can hear a sound down the hallway, outside our back door, in the neighbor's yard, or even down the street that I can't hear. It turns out most dogs can hear at about four times the distance that humans can. They can also detect where a sound is coming from in one six hundredth of a second. For example, Sparky knows immediately when I've opened the crinkly bag of doggy treats on the back porch, even when he's in a deep snooze under my bed. Dogs are really good at determining where sounds are coming from because they can move their ears in so many different directions. There are over a dozen muscles in a dog's ear which help tilt, lift, and rotate each ear independently. They use their ears like two separate satellite dishes to determine where a sound is coming from and what it is. Dogs not only have a much larger part of their brain dedicated to hearing compared to humans, but each of their ears also triggers its own area in their doggy brain. Sometimes I'll see Sparky tilt his head, point one ear back, point one ear forward, and look very focused. That means he's heard someone in the kitchen open up a can of his favorite beefaroni when I haven't heard a thing. Sparky fell asleep when I started explaining what sound really is in scientific terms, but I'm sure you'll find it interesting. Sound is energy. It's created when there has been a mechanical movement or a vibration of an object. These vibrations can be tiny, like the clink of two teacups together, or large, like the roar of a jet plane engine. We may or may not see the vibrations themselves, but you know they are there if you can hear a sound. For example, when I play my ukulele for Sparky, I pluck the strings and cause them to vibrate. That vibration of the strings creates vibrations in the air right around the strings which reverberate or reach outward through the air to Sparky's ears. The pathways of these vibrations are called sound waves. And if we could see sound waves, we would notice they come in all shapes and sizes. When I play my ukulele, I like to create a lot of different sound waves, even when my doggy audience of one leaves the room to take a nap. Sound waves are using the molecules in solids, liquids, or gases to travel. This is why in a perfect vacuum, a space that is void of matter, we wouldn't be able to hear any sound. But since there's matter all around, I'm able to hear Sparky howl from just about anywhere. Sound waves can also travel easily around obstacles and corners. I could be in my room with the door closed, over in the neighbor's yard, or sitting underwater at the bottom of our pool, and I know when Sparky is hoping for a piece of bacon. Every sound wave is squeezing and stretching molecules of matter in a particular way, which in turn creates the particular sound we hear. There are two ways we measure sound. The first is by volume. 
Just like a wave in the water, a sound wave in the air will have high points and low points. The difference between the high point and the low point is the height of the wave, or the amplitude. A sound wave with a large amplitude is a loud sound. A sound wave with a small amplitude is a soft sound. The volume of a sound is measured in decibels. Loud sounds have high decibels and soft sounds have low decibels. The sound of the space shuttle taking off is approximately 200 decibels, while the sound of leaves rustling is close to 10 decibels. Anything below zero decibels is something the average human can't hear. But Sparky and his doggy friends can definitely hear sounds in the negative decibel range. They're also more sensitive to sounds in the really high decibel range. This is why Sparky will hide in the laundry room when he hears fireworks, sirens, or thunderstorms. Those sounds are much louder for him than any human in the house. The second way we measure sound is in pitch. Every sound has a particular pitch based on its frequency, which is the number of sound waves passing through a fixed place for a given amount of time. Again, if we could see sound waves, we notice the sharp, high-pitched screech of a cat would appear as many, many waves in just one second of sound. The deep, low-pitched sound of Sparky's growl in response would show up as just a few waves in one second of sound. The frequency of a sound is measured in hertz. Any low pitches below 20 hertz are called infrasounds, and any high pitches above 40,000 hertz are called ultrasounds. The average human can hear sounds between 20 and 20,000 hertz, but dogs like Sparky, most of them can hear any sound from 67 to 45,000 hertz. This means we humans might have a slight edge in hearing low frequency sounds, but dogs clearly have the advantage in hearing much higher frequencies. Imagine a piano. To capture the full range of notes an average human can hear, a piano would need 28 more keys on the right side in the higher notes. For a dog, that piano would need a few less keys on the left in the low notes, but 52 more keys on the right in the higher ones. This means if Sparky and I were in a bat cave, he would be able to hear much more of the communication going on between the bats than I would. When I turn on the vacuum, not only does it sound louder to him, but he's probably hearing far more high-pitched noises coming from it than I do. And outside, Sparky hears the higher chirps of the sparrows and clicks of the crickets I can't probably hear. Like most dogs, Sparky is able to hear up in the ultrasonic range. Which brings me to the dog whistle I got Sparky for his birthday. This particular type of whistle is short and has a really tiny opening for air to escape through when I blow through it. This teensy opening in the whistle creates a high frequency sound wave, something in the neighborhood of 35,000 hertz. I can't hear it, but Sparky, he definitely does. I know this for certain because if I blow that dog whistle, he perks one ear up and opens one eye from a dead sleep. And nothing else makes him do that but the sound of a can opener. I know I shouldn't blow the dog whistle too loud, too long, or too close to Sparky's ear because his hearing is so sensitive. So I'm careful not to do that. If he doesn't move off my bed when I call him with the dog whistle, I just switch over to my ukulele. Scientists believe dogs can detect exceptionally tiny differences between musical notes. If I play even the slightest bit flat, Sparky knows it, gets off my bed, and hides himself in the bathtub. Dogs can lose their hearing just as humans do as they get older, but the higher frequencies tend to be the last to go. So if I ever find Sparky's dog whistle, I should be able to use it even into his senior years. Not that I would make him get up from a nap or anything. Sparky seems to need his sleep. 
and the occasional can of beefaroni. Want to hear more? Here are some additional facts. Scientists believe domestic dogs have the hearing range they do because of their ancestors. Wild dogs needed to hear the high pitches of rodents to hunt for food and be able to detect danger from a long distance away. Terriers are a breed of dog with exceptional instincts for hearing, hunting, and killing rodents. As an alternative to rat poison, these dogs are being used in big cities or on farms to tackle pest problems. The dog whistle is called the Galton's Whistle, after its inventor, Sir Francis Galton. Galton created the whistle to study the range of human hearing, but then discovered it was a much handier invention for dog owners. This is not the first time a scientific invention has become useful in another surprising way. To study the hearing of dogs, a special test was developed called the Brainstorm Auditory Evoked Response. Rather than depending on a dog raising their paw or barking a response, this test directly monitors a dog's brain activity in response to sounds. Due to their ultrasonic hearing, it's highly possible that dogs may be able to predict earthquakes. Puppies are born deaf. Their hearing will develop in the first two weeks of their life. Huh. We have a bit of an edge over dogs in detecting where a sound is coming from. Humans can typically detect the angle of a sound within one degree, while dogs can only do it as close as four degrees. Scientists believe the typical range of sound frequencies a human can detect is based on the range of the human voice. We are tuned most closely to the pitches of human conversation. To refer to an expression or statement as a dog whistle means it's intended to be understood only by a particular group of people. That joke, only your family understands and thinks is funny? That's a dog whistle. If you're all ears and want to know more, here are some possible activities. Study up on the range of sounds which can be heard by various animals. How do dogs compare to cats or bats or rats? Which creature in the animal kingdom can hear the lowest pitch? Who can hear the highest? Who wins the crown for being able to hear the widest range of sound? Create a string phone using two tin cans and a string. Be able to explain why you can still hear someone's whisper talking on this unusual phone. Conduct a sound experiment in your home or classroom. How many different pitches can you find by tapping on various objects with a pencil? Keep track of your experiment on paper and share your findings. Explore sound by making a musical instrument using everyday objects. The options and ideas online are endless. Do you have a dog whistle? If so, train Fido to perform a trick or two using the whistle to gain his attention and treats to reward him. Show off your superstar hound. Blindfold a friend or family member and create unusual sounds one by one using objects in the room. Have them guess what's making each of the sounds. There's an interesting scientific concept called the Doppler effect. It explains why the pitch of a sound will increase as distance from the sound decreases. In other words, why a mosquito sounds more obnoxious as it heads toward your ear, or an ambulance siren changes pitch as it drives past you. Research the Doppler effect and present your findings. If you're a true dog lover, discover how dogs and their exceptional hearing talents have been used to help the handicapped herd animals, rescue their owners, or simply make for a better world. Now, I found Sparky, but I still haven't found his special dog whistle. I've asked him about it, but he's napping on his pillow at the moment and doesn't seem to care. I know he's buried it in the backyard a time or two. Hmm, that reminds me. Have you seen my ukulele? Sparky! 
Sparky! Bye everyone! We are thrilled that you're watching Blues Studios 24-7. We're so excited to bring round-the-clock entertainment and educational content to your home. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos. At Blue Studios, we aspire to revolutionize the way families spend time together. We empower families by providing them with tools to work together, earn and learn, and achieve new heights of success. Visit www.bluestudios.io to discover more about our mission and how we empower families to succeed. Thank you so much for being part of our community. Keep watching and learning with us. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.